Did you wait? And when he finally appeared before Herod, Herod made a mock of him, but the Lord's ministry was done there, was done. As I said to you, he gave them a sign that three days and three nights he would be in the earth. Okay? Three days and three nights he would be in the earth. And the scripture said, afterward he gave them no more sign. So I'm giving them more sign. By the time that sign is fulfilled, he would have been out of this world. Right? Going back to his father. Going back to his father. So let us be careful as we look into the prophecy and we look into the word. Because many people are here waiting for things to happen, not knowing they already happened. Okay? And I wouldn't even bother going into all of these things about dates and stuff because by every kind of reckoning we have had based on our calendars, which are all messed up, the times that we're talking about, whether we go from Daniel or Revelation, would have expired from the 70s. Okay? And we have come up now into another generation because I was a youth right then. Okay, so something is wrong with our reckoning of time. Our time been messed up along the way. Right? And we can't reckon God's time based on Roman times. Okay? The scripture here talk about 1260 days. And it talk about 1260, 42 months. Because that's how they reckon the time in the time of Noah. But we don't know what happened afterwards. The seasons were messed up. The time is messed up. But we know certainly that God has told us that he will come as a thief in the night. And that is the reason why we are in this time we are waiting. We are in this time we are waiting. So I don't want to get into all of those dates and all that stuff. which I study them and I know them like they on the tip. Right? I don't bother with them. All I know is that the time has run out. Okay? And it's time for us to be ready for the coming of the Lord. The time has run out. Okay? The time has run out. And as I said to you before, don't be listening to people tell you about the three and a half tribulation and great tribulation. God said that wouldn't even be a great tribulation if there were if there was even one. Right? Diocletian persecution, 10 years, and, and the church of what? As small as it was, um, was even greater than that. Right? The time of the church of um, Ephesus, Smyrna, right? And then, yeah, in Pergamos, Thyatira, you know, and then coming down, Sardis. So in the church of Sardis, and the Bible said that the, the church was, was decimated by all of these tribulation that was going through, right? That's why he said you have a little name, you have a little strength. But when the church was, came into the new world, as they talk about Philadelphia, then the church began to gain strength again. But as I said, the devil followed them, right? The corruption is all over the world. Why do we have a nation that says in God we trust, but have demonic symbols on the money, right? I won't even tell you. Right? Why? Okay, and I'm saying to you, so the, the Bible talks about those who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Right? So we are built upon lies. There are lies from the foundation coming up. And so it was from the Garden of Eden. To tell Eve that if you eat of this tree, your eyes will be open. And you shall have no things that are built gods and all these things. Right? The Bible said when she grabbed the fruit and bit into it, she said her eyes were open, yes. So was the devil speaking the truth? Was the devil right? I know advocates for the devil would say yes, the devil was right because when she bit it, her eyes were open. Okay. I, but God was saying, listen, whether your eyes are going to open or not, there's some things I don't want you to know. And you're better off not knowing that. So when he told her, told him that you would surely die, someone said, but the devil said, but look at you. Did you drop dead? 
So now he's got is a lie, right? Because now you ate the fruit, your eyes open, and you didn't drop dead. So now believe me from now on. Because what I said to you is that your eyes are open, your eyes are open. Did you drop dead? No, you didn't drop dead. So who's right? Devil said, I was right. But God didn't say anything. He just came and he told him, he said, listen, okay, you chose the wrong way. Now I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you the dark side of this whole thing, which the rebel Satan didn't tell you. Because now you have left yourself open up to things that would never have happened to you. Right? And the exchange you have made, you're going to find one day, is going to bring you more distress and hell and, than anything else. So don't listen to the devil. Right? What the devil told her was a lie. There was no truth in it. Because before even the death came, it would have been something else to drop dead, yes. But the suffering that came with it. Right? Before he got to that point. The suffering. The suffering. And who is the architect of this very same suffering? More than the very same devil. The fears. Right? All of these things that came. The pain. All of these things. The devil master of pain, fear, and death, right? Right? All of these things, worth it. That very same devil is going to give you hell right here, I'm telling you. Okay? He didn't tell you that part of the story. So today, as I said to you, the Bible, Jesus said, if you suffer with me, the Bible said, you will reign with me. And the children of God got the chance to reign with him, Revelation 11, and the scripture said here, and the temple of God was opened in heaven, verse 19, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings, and earthquake and great hail. This is the end of it. This is the end of it. And that's the coming of the Lord. The other revelation is not written in a sequence, you know. Yeah, different episodes just come in and right in the middle of a chapter something like a switch over into something else, right? And so you, it's just like you're having a dream or a vision, if you know anything about those things sometimes, when you have a dream or a vision, sometimes the Lord shows you something, you, you realize this about this part, doesn't connect with that apart, and it just jump into something new. Yeah, if you know what I know, then you would know what I mean, jump into something new. And sometimes, the thing that you are dreaming about, you might find that, well, it's not even so serious as the thing that came after. Okay? So sometimes, somebody asked me, one time he asked me, he called me to his house every time, he said, he said, he said, how do you know these things, right? How, how do you know that that was going to happen to this sister? How do you know that, you know, things that are going to happen like that, the Lord is showing you these things. And whenever the Lord is showing you something, you know by his spirit. Right? And you, you know, you hear his voice and you know when he's talking to you. And the Bible says, he said, um, when he pours his spirit upon our flesh, the sons and the daughters that prophesy, they have dreams, they have visions. All of these things are manifest in the church today by the Holy Ghost. And when, when the Lord was to be saved, I preached that sermon about six dreams, right? When he was born, six dreams came there to Joseph, right? And Joseph was a man of God. God appeared to him in a dream to tell him, he must take Mary. When he was supposed to go back to um to to Egypt with a baby, he appeared in a dream, told him again, when to come back, right? He warned the wise men in a dream. Right? So you if you're not if you're not dreaming and not uh, God not showing anything in dreams, then um, I'm not saying you should force it, but because you can't anyway. But pray to God that you'll be able to see things. Right? Because even those wise men, God showed them the star in the east. And they came and said, Where is he that is born, King of the Jews? Remember that's where I started. 
with all these things I'm talking about, they would decide. And when they were supposed to go back, the king was trapping them, saying, must come back to me and tell me where the baby is. And God told them, don't tell him anything. The man is a, of the devil, don't tell him anything. And in fact, don't even go that way. Lest they might be there waiting for you and then you, they're forced you to have to tell them something. He said, go a different way. So that by the time they realize, you're way home already. Or way, way on your journey. Right? By the time. So Herod was actually so mad. Because he said like, how did they find out? Yes, they will find out when God is speaking to them. Yes. So sometimes people don't understand how you find out. How do you know? How do you know? They will find out because God is speaking to them. And God will say to them, go another way. Go another way. So this is what happened to the church. And we are waiting for the coming of the Lord. I want us to sing that song we sang the other day. I tried to sing it. I hope I can do better this time. I remember the words. The church is one foundation. The church has been through so much. And today, people take the church to be, let me just say it for a moment. As I said to you, people take the church to be like, because you have a name written on your church. Right? But the scripture says here, those, the church, let's go back to Revelation 13. It said, And all that dwell, verse 8, upon the face of the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of the Lamb, of life, of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. It doesn't mean that you were slain at the foundation of the world, but he's saying that all of that was set up before the world began, that he would die. But he had a book, the Lord Jesus of a book, and some names are in it. I pray God your name is in it. Okay? I believe my name is in it. But as I said when we were dealing with the parable with the soul, what I said, the seed is the word. It's left up to you what you want to do with the seed. You can leave the seed on top of the ground for the birds to take it. And don't ask if they're not birds up because the birds represent the devil, right? The devil's all over the world waiting to take away that word from you. Or you can let that seed go into a rocky place where it's not going to last. Right? You can let it also go into a situation where it, it, it can't survive. It, 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 can't, it won't bring to come to maturity because you are haunting it with your way of life by the thorns. That's why it's saying you, you're holding it to ransom, a hostage, and it, it, it will never come to maturity. Or you can let it go into good ground where it will come to maturity and bring forth fruit for God's kingdom, right? So I'm telling you. So where are we, right? It's left up to us what we want to do with it. And the word comes to us today, right? And the scripture said, there's that book, that book. That's the church, right? And the God knows who or in his book, and the angels of God know who in his book. Because when God sent an angel out to, to be a guardian angel and to take care of you, they know who you are. You think they don't know I'm David Ferguson? I didn't even know my name before I was born. They know who I am. They know who you are. Okay? And they're protecting you, helping you so that you'll be able to be saved. Right? And that's the church. So I'm not going to tell you that the church is my church because it's Assembly Church or a JW Church or a Catholic Church or any other church for that matter. 
I'm not going to tell you that. I'm not going to tell you that. Because in every church I've found there are wicked people, sons of Belial from hell. And Israel was a righteous nation, yet hardly any of their kings were any good. They were rotten like, I mean, rotten, rotten, no good. Right? And Israel spent more time in idolatry than they spent worshiping God. And yet still they were supposed to be a people of God. And that's why God scattered them. He said, you're just as bad as the people who are around you. And Moses warned them about it. Okay? So, here we are today. The names written in the book of life. Right? We talk about people who, who are backbiters, people who, are, who, are, um, who, who, um, who, who seek to destroy one another, people in witchcraft and hatred and all malice and all these evils. They never church. And all these things are going to drive you to hell. I don't think that because maybe your church had this name or that name on it. It won't make a difference. What is going to make a difference if your names are in the book of life? And that's the reason why the Bible says, those who wander after the beast, right? Those who run after the system of this world, right? It don't mean those who run into a church are running to that church. Those who run after that system of the world. And that's why they can't be saved. And I said to you, if you were reading and you really consider so well, Mary Magdalene was wife to Jesus, you know directly you're lost. Right? No child of the right mind, I mean at a right heart. You would trash something like that immediately and burn it with fire. Right? Well these are some of the things which are in our system. So the internet is good in the sense that it helped to spread the gospel that everybody can hear all over. But the thing is that it's censored, it's messed up, it can be easily messed up. Somebody can just pull something out of it like that. You know, just like in these countries people worship God in China, they're up for persecution. Right? And they can't say certain things, like you say, I'm talking here now. This thing is censored. What is he saying? And these rulers in these countries, like all in North Korea, all these places, those men live in utmost fear and terror, right? They have to carry their weapons with them and, and they can't even trust a shadow. Yeah. I was watching this movie about this man who they said that he saved a lot of people. Um, in a, he was a, a cardinal, uh, some man in the Catholic Church, and he saved a lot of Jews from, the, um, from Hitler's camp, right? And the man tried to kill him so many times, he tried, tried, many, so many things, he tried to kill him. And he couldn't kill him. And they were showing one part of the story where his son had a, a toy gun at home. And he was playing around with the daddy. And he came to him with a toy gun. And I think he came there, like he said, stick up or something like that. And the man was so utterly terrified. He was like, he was so terrified. And yesterday he had killed so many people. Our eye people killed with a gun and destroyed. And he was so terrified because his little son came to him with a tar gun. Right? He was so terrified. He was so terrified. Right? So I'm saying to you that we're living in a very serious time, dangerous times. The harvest is past. I'm saying not totally in the sense that Jesus has come, but I'm saying, let us be ready, okay, that tribulation is past. We still have tribulation. Some people, I heard about this sister, I had a tribulation going on for 10, 20 years. I had my own trial of my tribulation going on for 10 years, okay, until the Lord showed me what was really happening to me, and he brought me out of this, out of it. And he said to me, I told you that you shouldn't do that. Right? And it wasn't going to work. Right? And now you are in this trouble. But he brought me out of it. And I thank him for giving me a second chance. Right? Okay? And how many times the child guys give me a chance to run over and over again, over and over again, right? Third chance, fourth chance, fifth chance. Don't play with his mercy though. Because you never can tell 
when it will have been your last chance. Israel complained in the wilderness constantly for nine times. They got nine chances, but they did not know there would not be a tenth. When they got to the point where they get to ten, God said, you know, you think I was watching? You tell Moses, he says, ten times I've sent me. And I, I'm going to take action this time. Exactly what you said, right? You want to die in this wilderness? I'm going to make you die right there. Okay? They play with God's mercy. Right? They didn't, they didn't, they didn't um, appreciate his mercy and use it for their good. So today, as I said, I want to sing that song, The Church is One Foundation. And that foundation is Jesus Christ our Lord. I will pick up back our studies again. I hope that um, you understand clearly what I said, scribes and uh, disciples and why then say Elijah must come and Jesus said Elijah came away. And this um, 1260 days persecution is gone and we are at a time when um, we have to be ready for the coming of the Lord. We have to be ready. We have to be ready. Now you see the Lord did not say that as soon as, you see, when scripture said immediately after the tribulation, then the sun be that and then that did happen. It didn't happen immediately in the sense of immediate, like the same year, but it did happen, like a generation away. And then there were other things to happen. Because as I said to you, in order for this thing to come to its close, Israel would have to become a nation again. Okay? That was in it. All that was in the plan. Okay? And so when Israel became a nation again, things were being formed, coming back, coming back. And God has a whole lot of people to be saved. As he said, leave the, the court out for the Gentiles. But one day it will be done. It will be done. It will be all done. Okay? So thank God for giving us the opportunity to be in his kingdom. And let us, as my grandmother used to say, buy up the opportunity. Right? Take it while we can get it. Because one day it will all be over. It will all be over. Why, as I said to you before, why am I talking about these things? Not to scare anybody, because they're not to be afraid of. Right? All you need to do is to be ready. You don't have nothing to be afraid of. Right? And don't put your trust in man. Even when people see the lies that are going on, some of them are still, don't get it. Don't, don't, don't get it. Right? The nation says, in God we trust, and the money, but it also has a demonic symbol on the money. What does that tell you? So, and people are talking about these things all over. It's on the internet, even before there was a Google. These things were being spoken about. And now it's spread more with even Google. Right? And spread more with the internet. So why can't we just wake up and see the hour in which we live? That is too late. Right? It's very late. And Jesus is at hand. It's not for us now to start to say, well, or it look like it's not going to happen again, you know. It's for us now to tighten our grip. To tighten our grip on salvation and the whole life. Yeah, we sing that song later, right? organ to this one, right? Church is one from this one. An organ song, man. Water and 
one on all the earth. Get one on all the earth. A character of salvation is one Lord, one faith, one birth. One holy name in the name of Jesus. Blessed partakes my holy Shed for me, that thou bids me come to thee, O Lord God, I come, hallelujah. 